Everybody ready? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our daily, our weekly briefing on COVID-19. Uh, just again, just ask people, uh, wear your masks. We're in almost the midway, the end of January right now. We're in the almost the 11th month of COVID-19, and don't give up yet. I think we get through the next two or two or three months. Stay vigilant. That's so just stay vigilant. Wear your mask. Practice social distancing. Uh, good hygiene, wash your hands, and just try to stay in your bubble. Um, I know as we open up more here in the Commonwealth, uh, yeah, you still got to keep your guard up. You still have to keep your guard up. And uh, I know the manager is going to be talking about the vaccines and, uh, and also the new variant that uh, uh, came in. And uh, so, uh, so more Martin Luther King, uh, even though our numbers are stabilizing, the deaths have, have increased. But now we have the Martin Luther King weekend. We're going to see where those numbers come out in another week or so. And uh, even though the numbers are going in the right direction. Uh, so I'm just asking to stay vigilant. And as I said before, we're receiving calls from people who want to know uh, when they're going to receive their vaccine and how. And at present, the state and the city officials are working on developing these plans. So just be patient. The managers are going to go over some of that today. And, uh, and luckily, the, what the team that we have here in the city of Worcester is excellent. They put a lot of time into planning for the vaccine, di distribution of the vaccine. It's led by the manager, Dr. Hirsch, our public health department, another partner, UMass Hospital, and other partners, St. Vincent's. And uh, we are going to have a good plan when, this, when we do have a good plan when the uh, vaccines come to the city of Worcester. And now uh, the manager's vaccinated the uh, first responders, and he has more, and he's going to give more updates where he's going after that. But uh, I want to thank, personally thank the manager for really concentrating on this and working with Dr. Hirsch. And, and uh, Maddie Castile and the whole public health department. Um, statewide uh, COVID numbers. Yesterday, the death toll from, from uh, confirmed coronavirus cases in Massachusetts rose to 13,829. That's an increase of over 800 deaths in a week in Massachusetts. Yesterday, the number of confirmed cases climbed by over 4,500, bringing the total of f to 480,000. Nationally, we have over 400,000 deaths since the start of the pandemic. And uh, I think that uh, the federal government was saying they expect another 100,000 deaths in February, Dr. Hirsch, by February, I think. And so it's still serious. So uh, it's still serious. And, and we've worked too long and too hard. Don't let your guard down on this. And globally, there's all been over 2 million deaths. Uh, statewide averages for hospitalized with the virus was lowered from age 73 last week to 71 this week. The average age of COVID deaths in Massachusetts uh, went from age 81 to, uh, at the end of December to age 79 now. However, the average age of people who tested positive was th age 39. Um, reopening news, uh, I think Governor announced today the effect of Monday, January 25th at 5 a.m. to stay at home advisory for hours uh, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. is rescinded. Effective Monday, January 25th at 5 a.m., the mandatory early closure of businesses order uh, requiring certain businesses to close by 9.30 p.m. will be rescinded. On May, uh, Monday, January 25th at 5 a.m., the following business and uh, activities uh, may operate past 9.30 p.m., uh, restaurants, arcade, and, out indoor, and outdoor recreation. Uh, movie theaters, uh, drive-in movie theaters, uh, youth and adult amateur sports, activities for golf, fa golf facilities and recreational boating and, and other businesses. You can visit our, uh, the website and, uh, and, and for the governor's website to find out more inf information on your particular business. Um, and also, uh, there is also the 25% temporary capacity and gathering limits remain in place until 5 a.m. on Monday, February 8th. Uh, Desi flu shots. Uh, Desi announced they are no longer requiring flu shots for students when they return to school. That said, uh, we're still encouraging parents to vaccinate their students. We've had a very mild flu season, and I think it's because of the masks that everybody's wearing, and, and to also our professional health care workers. And, uh, like so much of what we do in the public health, we're going to ask you to do this for our seniors and for our residents to get your, uh, your family vaccinated with the flu shot and still do that uh, to protect everyone. Uh, a few weeks back, we announced uh, a mass competition, and hopefully by next Thursday, we're going to have announced those winners. 
We have 20 artists submitted from uh, over age uh, 19 and over category, and about 40 artists submitted uh, mass designs from 18 and under. And, uh, and many were from our art classes and also from our Worcester Public School students. So I just want to thank uh, everybody who submitted a mask design, and we'll have more information coming out shortly. And just remind everyone again about rental assistance. Uh, the city manager and the council put up $1.9 million in rental assistance available here for the residents of Worcester. Uh, partnering agencies include Central Mass Housing Alliance, Friendly House Inc., Open Sky, Community Services, Worcester Community Action Council, and Worcester Community Housing Services. Uh, if you need any help with this, please contact these agencies directly, and you may find out more about this program by visiting www.worcestermagovernor.gov coronavirus assistance. Uh, community testing again next week. Uh, we have Monday, January 25th, Tuesday, January 26th, and Thursday, January 28th, all three days from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So get tested over at the Mercantile Center. Uh, just send us some numbers, the senior numbers. Uh, we made uh, 482 calls this week to seniors. Since the start of the pandemic, uh, we almost made 29,000 calls to the seniors here in the city of Worcester. So uh, we're keeping seniors in our mind, and we delivered the last this week, past week, 4,834. Uh, for meals and uh, again uh, I just ask everyone again to be vigilant wear your mask uh, pay attention to uh, what Dr. Hirsch has to say and uh, and uh, we will uh, maybe turn this over to the manager I mean to the Dr. Hirsch oh, wait, wait a second I think the Dr. Hirsch why don't you come out and we're going to bring the manager out he's been called away for something to be discussed Thank you, Mayor Petty. Um, I guess I'll uh, go out of order today, but uh, the news that I have is, I think, pretty encouraging. We are seeing uh, in the hospital systems, both uh, St. Vincent's and at UMass, um, a, a kind of a plateau has been reached. It hasn't shown a decrease yet, but we have leveled off. And the hope is that if that trend continues and we start to see a drop off, that um, we really might be kind of at the end of the crest. This was exactly the model that was predicted by um, Mike Glazer, who uh, works here in the city as a, as a data expert. And, um, and I think everyone is very uh, hopeful about it. But the one thing that's giving us cause is the, the strain that uh, Mayor Petty referenced, the, the UK strain uh, from Britain that uh, has been documented now to be here in, in Worcester County. And so what we are hopeful is that uh, that strain doesn't uh, cause a, a re-inflection going back up. Uh, so I think it's really important that we not, uh, even though the governor has allowed us to open up, but in the hospital setting, all of the centers have decided just to hold a line where they are now. So they're not going to start doing elective surgeries again. They're not going to redeploy their already redeployed uh, medical staff away from the COVID units. They're going to uh, keep their recovery rooms as ICUs so that they'll have more um, surge power for COVID patients. And I can tell you, Dr. Broach is very concerned about opening up too soon. He is, um, staffing, as you know, the DCU Center, and they've been extremely busy. Um, and uh, I think uh, they got up to close to 70 patients now at a time. The turnover is pretty fast. Their average length of stay there is still less than four days, but there's a steady stream in and out. It's like a dynamic equilibrium, and, and uh, they're getting um, great care there, and, and the patients are recovering beautifully. So uh, that's all good news. The death numbers continue to rise, um, although somewhat slower, but that always lags behind all of the other inpatient activity. So we're not really convinced yet that we're out of the woods. And certainly, regardless of uh, being out of the woods, if we open up, we're going to definitely need to keep with the three W's, as uh, Mayor Petty always reminds us. Um, so. Uh, that's what I can tell you about the clinical side. Both um, the uh, Family Health Center and the EMK Center are still having very, very high 
percentage positivity rates of the people that are coming in to get tested. Uh, for the EMK Center, it was 35% uh, this week. For uh, Family Health Center, it was 22%. Um, but interestingly, for Worcester uh, as a whole, uh, the Mass Department of Public Health gave us numbers that for the first time in three weeks, we actually went down a smidge. So we're down to like 26% now, which is lower than we had been up to 30 percent like two weeks ago. So there might be uh, really light at the end of the tunnel there that, the, that there's some burnout going on with the, with the virus so long as this new strain doesn't go hog wild. On the vaccination front, I know you're going to get more numbers from uh, the city manager. Um, just I can tell you that it's a, it's a wonderful uh, experience going up to the Worcester Senior Center and if any of you are interested, certainly I know we could arrange for you guys to go up and take a look. I know Ben has been up there. Um, uh, the spirit is wonderful. The volunteers are fantastic. The first responders are so grateful. We've gotten satisfaction surveys with like 98% satisfaction grades. And um, it's a quick, painless, easy process, in and out really easily. And we haven't had any uh, major adverse reactions that have required us to activate uh, our EMS buddies who are just a little down the street at 100 Providence Street. Um, we also haven't had any problems with uh, major complaints, even longer term. There have been some pain in the arm, a little bit of redness. Some people have gotten a rash, uh, particularly if they've had COVID actually as an infection sometime in the last uh, 10 months, they seem to have a little bit more likelihood for reactivity. So what we've been advising people when they call, you know, I had COVID, I think I can get the vaccine now, should I get it? We say get it so long as you've been 14 days after your last day of symptoms and the last three days before you get the vaccination, you have to be totally asymptomatic, no fever, not taking any Tylenol or anything like that. And, um, but before you get it, you might think about taking something like a Claritin or a Zyrtec or an Allegra just to reduce the likelihood that you would get a strong reaction. Um, and if you, if you don't, if you have somebody driving you and you don't, uh, you're not coming alone, you could get uh, a dose of Benadryl. That's also a good drug to just cut down on the histamine response. Um, so that center has been running three days a week for these two weeks, and there's big plans in place uh, over the next uh, week to two weeks to ramp that up, and we, I think the city manager will go over. There are a lot of partners that we're getting that are helping us uh, expand the possibilities there at the senior center, and there are gonna be other sites in Worcester that will also be working. And at the same time, uh, Dr. Castile has a mobile effort to try to work with the different congregate homes and the city manager will go over those uh, stats with you as well. So uh, needles in arms, that's what we're all about right now. Um, and I think that there's a feeling that um, there's a clamor for this. There's a lot of people calling saying, I want it, I want it, I want it. We're still in phase one. Phase one has been really broadened now to include a lot of different kinds of first responders, not just uh, fire, police, and EMS personnel, but personnel in places like uh, the reservoir and constables and court officers and um, visiting nurses and home health aides, and, um, and there's quite a few in the city. So we're gonna kind of go through that list as quickly as we can and then flip over to phase two where our hope is that we really, um, in the early phases of phase two, hit hard all of the teachers and the ancillary educational staff so we can get our kids back in school as early as we can with confidence that their, uh, their educators are not gonna be uh, getting the virus. So um, I think it's very encouraging. I mean, yesterday was kind of a wonderful day, I think, for everybody to just kind of realize that we had turned a page and we now have some real serious uh, national support. Um, and I think working with that staff is going to be really important and, and new and, uh, and very refreshing for all of us that have been kind of feeling a little bit like 
it's been uh, riding on the back of our municipalities and not really the feds. Um, so I'll quit there and just say I, I'm very grateful to all the volunteers that have been helping us do this vaccination work uh, and all the amazing staff at the Department of Public Health and the Emergency Management Group that have kept this uh, effort going. And, uh, and of course, Dr. Castile and her tireless work with the homeless community. Uh, it, we're very lucky with the folks that we have in place. And uh, it stems from the leadership of those two guys behind me. So I'll quit there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hirsch. And let me um, maybe start where Dr. Hirsch uh, left off and saying that, you know, when I give you the numbers and the stats in terms of the vaccinations, that is reflective of a phenomenal amount of hard work on the part of a lot of city employees and a lot of volunteers. Uh, whether it be from the medical school, from the community, from the Worcester Public Schools. It's just been uh, rewarding to see, just like back in March when this all first started, it was all hands on deck, everybody pitching in, uh, doing what they could do uh, at that time just to slow the spread and keep people safe. And now as we go on the offense uh, to ramp up our uh, efforts to get, uh, you know, shots into people's arms and, and build that wall uh, of defense uh, for our community. So um, we're very fortunate to have so many good, dedicated people literally are working around the clock. Monday was a holiday for a lot of folks, and yet there were a lot of folks at the Senior Center putting in a 12-hour day, uh, making sure more people could get vaccinated uh, and be protected. Uh, as of today, uh, we have uh, a total, since the beginning of the pandemic, of 18,014 confirmed positive cases for Worcester. That's an increase of 885 over last week. Um, that's still a big number, but you would probably recognize that's about 334 uh, less than the previous week's increase. Uh, and the previous week's increase was slightly less than the week before that. And so as Dr. Hirsch alluded to, where you're hopeful, uh, not sure yet, but hopeful that we are maybe at a plateau level uh, and we can start bending uh, that curve uh, downward. Uh, we, I'll go into a little bit um, the context in which we're going to be seeing whether that is true uh, with vaccines on one end and new strains on the other and the tension that that creates and see if we can continue to bend it uh, in the downward uh, direction. Um, On that note, on Sunday, uh, the State Department of Public Health announced a uh, Boston woman had tested positive for the UK variant of COVID-19 after having traveled to the UK. Uh, this week, we were informed that a Worcester County resident uh, who had also traveled overseas uh, during the holidays had tested positive for the new COVID strain. Uh, that individual became symptomatic on January 4th and was tested on January 5th at UMass. Uh, to date, we've heard from the CDC that there are 88 cases uh, across 14 U.S. states involving uh, what they're calling the U.K. variant. Uh, this particular strain uh, spreads more easily and more quickly uh, than the other strains uh, that we have been dealing with. Um, and as health experts continue to monitor the situation, it remains critically important uh, to continue to wear the masks, continue to do uh, the social distancing, Stay home uh, in your bubble uh, when you don't need to be out. Uh, if you're sick, uh, don't go to work, uh, don't go out, get tested, uh, and make sure you know uh, your status. Uh, that really is an important uh, message. So again, we're increasing uh, the vaccination rate in our community, uh, and we are hopefully seeing some of the uh, mitigation efforts start to uh, provide results with this plateauing, but we are uh, unsure yet what we're going to be up against in terms of the new UK variant if that becomes more widespread in the state and uh, in our community, which is going to win out uh, in terms of whether we see increased numbers uh, in the future or another spike, or can we keep 
the pressure on uh, with more vaccinations and everybody continuing to do their part and really drive down despite the, the presence of this UK uh, strain. Um, in terms of uh, numbers, we got two sets of notes here. So. Uh, the towns, we have the town of Shrewsbury uh, had 212 additional cases this week uh, for a total of 2,008 cases. Uh, the town of Holden, another 105 cases this week, bringing their total to 600, uh, 965. 81 additional cases in Grafton, bringing their total to 702. And 62 new cases in Leicester, bringing their total to 700. In terms of the combined UMass Memorial St. Vincent numbers. Um, we had two additional uh, inpatient uh, COVID positive uh, individuals, bringing that total <clears throat> number of inpatient uh, folks to 246. Uh, we saw a decrease uh, by 14 of ICU patients between the two systems. Uh, their total is at 46. Um, Unfortunately, 24 additional deaths in the last week, uh, bringing the total uh, between the two systems to 566. Uh, and then 69 health employees uh, testing positive uh, over the last week. Worcester specific deaths, uh, we had two over the previous week, bringing the total number of Worcester residents uh, who've passed away from the coronavirus to 355. Uh, as of today, we have 51 uh, patients at the DCU uh, field hospital. Amongst our city uh, employee workforce, we have 20 uh, active cases of um, city employees who have tested positive for the coronavirus. They're all isolating. We have seven others who are in quarantine because of uh, close contact. That's a total of 27 city employees who are either in isolation or quarantine. As was mentioned by both the mayor and Dr. Hirsch, um, we've been very uh, aggressive about trying to get our first responders and our Alliance Towns first responders vaccinated at our EDS site uh, uh, at the Senior Center and uh, I think making good progress over the first two weeks. Uh, we've uh, been able to administer 1,318 uh, vaccinations. Uh, locally, what that means is 307 Worcester police officers or 70.6% or of the Worcester Police Department has now been vaccinated. Uh, again, that's what we want to see. Uh, we want to get into that 70, 80 range for that herd immunity. Uh, and we'll continue to work on those numbers and try to get that number up. Uh, we have 297 Worcester firefighters who have been uh, vaccinated uh, to date. That gives us 75.2% of the Worcester Fire Department that's been uh, vaccinated, at least with their first shot. These are all first shots. Uh, 35 of our emergency communications uh, employees, or 66% of that uh, department, have been um, vaccinated to date. Uh, so again, I think those are good numbers, uh, and we'll continue to work on that. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, we've, in this expanded phase uh, uh, of phase one, part of phase one. Uh, we've opened up to congregate settings, uh, home health workers, um, and the homeless population falls under that congregate um, setting as many of them live in shelters and other facilities. Uh, and Dr. Castile, uh, supported by a number of medical students, uh, have been going uh, out to those locations uh, given transportation challenges and other things to try to uh, get the, that vulnerable population inoculated. Um, on Tuesday, sh they administered 98 vaccinations. They went to places like uh, Ascension, uh, where Hotel Grace has been operating uh, during the winter months, Martin Luther King building uh, off of Chandler Street, which is run by Smock, one of their shelters. Uh, Jana's place, uh, St. John's Food Pantry, some of the employees and volunteers there, uh, Dismas House, uh, Abby's House, Hector Reyes, um, 
Then uh, today she was at the Queen Street shelter run by Smart and Catholic Charities, did another 60 uh, vaccines there. Um, we're, um, on Friday she'll be at the uh, tomorrow at Abby's house where we're expecting to give over 100 uh, vaccinations to the women uh, who are housed there. <clears throat> Next week we'll be going to the YWCA, to Central Mass Housing Alliance, and to Friendly House uh, that offer, uh, operate other shelter facilities. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're expanding our efforts. We've got the EDS site at the Senior Center where people come to us and then we're trying to take the show on the road, if you will, uh, to cover more territory and more of the categories of folks who are eligible during this particular phase. Um, we have a new police class that starts on Monday. Uh, we'll have 31 new recruits uh, uh, beginning their six month training to be Worcester police officers. Uh, so we have vaccinated 14 of those 31 uh, police recruits uh, and hopefully by the end of next week we will vaccinate the balance of that class. So as they sit in the classroom and do their PT and their other uh, on, hands on learning to become Worcester police officers, uh, they will be vaccinated uh, as well. Uh, just to edify folks about phase one, uh, now that uh, this, the entire category of folks are uh, eligible, uh, that includes home-based health workers, so a lot of the folks who go out visiting nurses, people who do um, assistance to elderly or disabled uh, individuals with uh, housework or other um, needs. Uh, we're reaching out to those companies and organizations that provide that service and inviting them to come to the senior center. And we've had hundreds of them uh, who've already gone through for their first shot and we expect to see significant additional numbers next week. And we are looking at expanding the number of days next week uh, as the funnel opens up uh, with larger categories uh, of um, em employees and workers uh, eligible. Uh, folks have lots of questions about whether they uh, fit into one of these categories. If somebody is wondering if they or their organization uh, fit into the category or when in the queue uh, they're eligible uh, to get the vaccine, you can go on www.mass.gov uh, and look up um, your particular category and see where it fits in. Uh, you can also visit the city's website, uh, with which is uh, www.worcesterma.gov. For more information, we'll continue to update that as the state refines it. There's a lot of categories that there are nuances within, and so the state constantly gets asked questions, well, does this particular category fit? Where do they uh, live in the um, kind of chart of eligible groups? And so that's always being updated and refined as they uh, clarify who belongs where and so folks should constantly check that uh, to know where they fit in. Um, we are doing uh, and I think we asked last week that uh, some of our media partners help us with the opportunity to do town hall meetings so that we can answer some more of these questions and uh, I'm very appreciative that many of our media partners have uh, agreed to do that. Uh, so Dr. Hirsch, myself and Dr. Castile uh, next Thursday, uh, January 28th, we'll be doing a Facebook Live town hall meeting uh, with the Telegram and Gazette um, that hopefully will allow us to get uh, more information out and answer questions that folks have. I know Dr. Castile and some folks from UMass will be doing a similar town hall meeting tomorrow uh, from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. Uh, with La Mega, a radio 106. Uh, 1 FM and 1310 AM, that's a Spanish speaking radio station. Um, and I know we will be uh, setting up additional um, town hall meetings with other media outlets and we thank everyone for working with us uh, on that. Uh, a lot of folks heard that the uh, Fenway, Gillette, uh, similar site in uh, Springfield is being set up for these super vaccination sites. Uh, I am hoping by this time next week uh, if not before, we will be able to announce uh, Worcester's uh, super vaccination site. We've been working closely with the state uh, and with many of our medical providers here in the Central Mass area, trying to identify the right location uh, and who uh, amongst those medical providers uh, can provide the uh, volume uh, of 
staff, volunteers, logistical support, et cetera, that will be necessary to get the volume of vaccines that we want to get to, particularly, as I mentioned, as the funnel gets wider. And then ultimately, as we get close to April, where there's general availability of the vaccine, and we have thousands of people uh, each week who are looking to access the vaccine, we want to make sure we're ready uh, and have that um, option. So we'll have our EDS site, we'll have a super site, uh, we will have the mobile units that are going out, and then we have a lot of other partners who are doing other cohorts of folks. So St. Vincent, uh, UMass, uh, the, there's been a lot of talk about the CVSs and Walgreens ultimately. Uh, some primary care physicians are going to have opportunities. So the system is still being built, but everybody is working together and being very aggressive uh, and very deliberate about really making sure that there's lots of options for folks in the community when it's your time uh, to get the vaccine, that you'll have an easy, safe, and efficient way uh, to access that. Uh, so know that we're spending a lot of time, and that's a real priority. Um, we also are announcing that effective this Monday, uh, we're... Uh, restoring uh, public access on a limited by appointment basis to our city buildings. Uh, the last three weeks we had uh, closed public access to the city buildings uh, as we were in the teeth of the second surge. Uh, we're now going to try to open it back up again on a limited basis by appointment. Um, but folks who have been looking to come in and uh, do business with the city, uh, whatever it may be, pulling a permit, uh, getting a birth certificate, paying a bill, uh, go on the city's website, uh, access those appointment schedules, uh, and uh, starting Monday we'll start uh, opening back up uh, our city buildings. Um, and just a reminder that even as we open up the city buildings and as the governor has opened up uh, uh, or loosened up, I should say, some additional uh, restrictions, the mask mandate uh, remains in place. Uh, so if you are going out to a restaurant, you're going out to City Hall, you're going out uh, to do some of the things that uh, you're going to be able to do uh, next week that you haven't been able to do in the last few weeks, you are still required to wear that mask when you're in those facilities uh, at all times. Uh, and that really is important that we continue to do that, not drop our, our guard uh, or, uh, you know, we run the risk especially with that variant uh, out there of moving backwards, and none of us obviously want to see that. So with that, um, I guess we'll take questions, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Dr. Hirsch, just a question for you. So as we kind of hurtle toward these phases where more and more folks, the pool is going to be larger and larger, um, the city manager talked about the super vaccin vaccination site and kind of all the things you're doing. Will you, will you expect and to what extent um, that the vaccine will come quicker in more doses from the state? Are you expecting that increase? And if the increase um, is, is large enough, would you, get, would you be able to expand and create new sites um, kind of at a short notice? I think we are going to have a lot of surge capacity. Uh, working with uh, UMass and Commonwealth Medicine, which is their kind of uh, logistical arm for large programmatic medical programs like prison medicine and things like that, they have a lot of expertise at standing up these kind of uh, efforts. So they're one of the partners that's at the table that the city manager has kind of put together. And Eric Dixon, the CEO of uh, UMass, and Carolyn Jackson, our, uh, of the CEO of St. V's, have also said that they're going to play a big role. Uh, we also have not completely tapped into the talent at the local colleges. So, you know, Becker and, and uh, Worcester State and Quinsigamond um, Community College all have uh, nursing programs, nursing assistant programs. Um, public health nursing programs, um, and Assumption has a PA program. So there's a wealth of people we can tap into that I think would help us expand. So it's just really a matter of us figuring out the logistics, and um, we don't want to duplicate efforts. So, I mean, that's really the brilliance, I think, of our emergency management group um, that, that we have in the city. And I think working with all of the experts at the various places that I mentioned, 
I think we can come up with a coordinated but very, very um, calculated uh, way of expanding. So I'm hoping, Ben, that you're absolutely right, that we will have uh, lots of places to get lots of needles and lots of arms. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Hi, I just, um, just want to make sure, just circle back to the, the, the variant discussion, maybe either Ed or, or Dr. Hirsch, as far as um, I know that with the CDC notifications and things, uh, you know, with, you know, Triple E and stuff, they say Worcester County, you know, but to protect, you know, identities and, and things like that. But I would think from a public health perspective, knowing what we've gone through, is there any way we could be more specific? I mean, Worcester County is pretty big. You could go to New Hampshire or Rhode Island. You know, as far as just letting people know what, they're, what we're up against with that. You know, I, I don't think we can be more specific about the particular patients that have been identified just out of concern for the, you know, confidentiality piece. But um, just if you think back uh, to last February at the Biogen uh, event that happened in, in Cambridge uh, at the seafront, sea actually, um, that ended up, that patient zero there ended up causing what they estimate is something like 450,000 cases. Mm -hmm. uh, if this variant is, uh, is more transmissible than that original variant, we just have to uh, presume that um, it's, it's, it's in more places than just the, the two anecdotal little cases that we've been reported out. And the difference is that, you know, when this hit us in February, Nobody knew what we were dealing with. We weren't in masks. We were all gathering at cocktail parties after these Biogen meetings and, and clapping each other on the back and doing all this stuff. And now we know a lot better. So I think we're just a heck of a lot more protected if we follow those three Ws. And, um, and the other thing I, I, I think has to be emphasized again, there's no evidence so far that the vaccinations that we're offering will not be effective against this new strain. The, the new strain has the same spike protein structure that the old strain does. So although it may be more transmissible, I think the vaccine will work. So if we can hold the line with the three W's and get those vaccinations out there, we can still beat it back. But if everybody has the attitude of, okay, now the governor has lifted a lot of restrictions and we can kind of uh, let our guard down, um, that's how something like this can, can catch fire, and that's what I'm hoping the people are smart enough to avoid. And, and we've been able to do that, by and large, here in Central Mass. So I know people that are listening are going to understand that um, we're, not, we're not there yet. We have to get a little bit further down the road. And um, I think that, uh, you know, the, the numbers that the uh, city manager quoted where we've seen a diminution in um, our, our weekly rates and, and our total percentage of positivity rates, all of that is really, really great, but it's one point in the curve. Just give us a couple more weeks to see where we're going with that. Good. And, um, I just want to make sure that I heard correctly with that, you know, um, keeping things general, the, the case that was announced from Worcester County this week uh, was a case of someone traveling from overseas? Yes. And, and it was um, from the UK? Yes. And can you say whether it was related to the other one that we found out about? Or? I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't say if I knew, but I don't know. Okay. And um, just looking at, you know, Governor Baker today, do you ever feel like, I don't know, like there's odd timing as far as these announcements of, you know, loosening of restrictions, and then we hear about a variant that's probably already running around, you know, it does. It seems to have happened more than once where these lifting of restrictions, these these, these sort of hopeful, maybe over optimistic, you know, uh, you know, uh, lifting of, of things, bumps into the reality on the ground. You know, is that something that you guys work through, or? I'm going to pass that to the city manager because he's just a much more political, uh, <laughs> a politically adept person than I am. Reading my mind, Doc, I was like, be careful, be careful, <laughs> be careful. Um, look, at, I think, as we've mentioned all the way along, this is a balancing. We, we know there's a lot of businesses and 
um, organizations that are just hanging on by a shoestring. Uh, and you, those, those businesses represent jobs, they represent people who have those jobs, who have tuitions and mortgages and all those things. And so you're trying to help those folks hang on while at the same time, of course, you're trying to manage your way through the, the impacts uh, of a spreading virus. So look at, I think, like I, I mentioned, we are in a different position than where we, are, where we were for previous reopenings in that now we have the vaccine. Uh, and every day, every week, soon to be every month, we're going to be, you know, widening the number of people who have that. And again, you, it's hard to draw a conclusion from one number, but if you heard the number on the healthcare workers, it was 69. Uh, the last number of weeks, we've been in double digits. So again, I don't want to read too much into it, but what you might infer from that, we'll see if it plays out over the next couple of weeks, is that because that group of individuals have now gotten their two vaccine dose, we should logically start seeing those numbers to go down uh, as that firewall gets built up. So I think that's, that's probably part of the calculation. Can we get the vaccines out there in sufficient um, you know, amounts and count on people, even with the additional you know, hours and restaurants and things, still count on people to do the right thing and wear the masks when they're there, not s spend more time there than they need to. If you're going to go have dinner, fine, uh, but don't be making a whole night of it. Uh, go have dinner, enjoy yourself, uh, and then uh, go home. Wear the mask when you're going to the restroom, when you're walking to your table, and when you're walking out. Uh, do all those kind of things that by now we should know to do. If we do those things coupled with the vaccine, uh, we should be able to strike that balance between not seeing a bigger spread and trying to keep some of these businesses and organizations afloat uh, and all that they represent to people and to families and individuals. Thanks. Question for the city manager before you get too far. Um, what, what kind of characteristics are you looking in the site for a super vaccination site? Are there specific things that you're looking for? Yeah, I mean, you all have been up at the senior center, so you know uh, on a smaller scale the type of uh, operations you need. You need registration areas, uh, then you need the vaccination sites, then you need the observation area where people are going to uh, wait for 15 minutes. You need some area in case people have negative uh, reactions that they can be cared for and treated there. And then all the support for that, uh, you know, break areas for the volunteers and the workers and the supplies, et cetera. Uh, we're doing pretty good in a relatively confined space at the uh, senior center. I think we're looking at a place that could get us into the thousands per day of volume um, and then be able to calibrate that based on what our partners could provide. Are we doing eight hour days? Are we doing 10 hour days? Are we doing seven days a week? Um, you know, all that's yet to be determined, but I think we're looking for the kind of venues that would give us that kind of volume uh, and that kind of flexibility. And again, do it in a safe way. So the registration needs to be a little bit removed from, uh, if possible, from the vaccination sites and from the observation sites. So uh, we've been exploring and I think we've got some good, um, good options that hopefully, uh, if not by next week, this time next week, even before that, we'll be able to say where we're going to be. And just one more question for Dr. Hirsch. Regarding the new strain, the new variant, are there models or what kind of models exist where we, it, there, there, are there check marks or, you know, goalposts that, hey, if we make it this far and it hasn't spiked, we're, we may be clear, or, or is there a deadline or a time where you're like, hey, this is a time to watch because if we do see a spike, then it probably has gotten out of hand? I, I know that there going to be recalculating models. The models that we were going on based on the CDC and then our own internal modeling that we had uh, seem to be spot on in terms of what actually has been happening with the numbers now. But I think this new wrinkle uh, has to recalculate now uh, new modeling. And I think people just don't know yet. Uh, you know, with only 88 cases uh, nationwide, I, I know there's more. It's just a matter of the assay to do it um, is very expensive and not done everywhere where testing is done. 
um, UMass has just gotten a grant to start doing the actual speciation thing where we'll be able to tell uh, whether we have variants like this. Uh, Dr. Ellison, uh, who's the head of infectious disease at UMass, has us involved in trying to flag for him uh, cases that might be suspicious for this. So um, I think we'll have a lot more information, you know, probably within the next two to three weeks with a new model developed and everything else. Um, but we just are kind of right now feeling our way a little bit. But uh, I think all the, all the precautions that people can take um, to continue to be vigilant and, uh, and if it's their turn to get the vaccine, please, please take the opportunity to get it. And sorry, just one follow-up. What's the protocol for testing for the, the variant strain? So is it, my understanding, I guess, to confirm, not everyone you know, at Mercantile is getting tested or that their, their samples aren't getting tested. It's just specific ones that may flag it. Right. It's, okay. it's, uh, the specimens get kind of held in a place where we can go back in and access them to test for this special strain. And uh, that, that mechanism is getting uh, fine-tuned by the UMass group. And we're going to help them any way we can, if, especially if we do hear about people that have traveled and those kind of things and part of their contact tracing thing. 